on the note of death wobble. I'm under here trying to get the track bar out. Man, I gotta say, all these bolts, they're just coming out. I haven't used peanut butter at all. And watch this. Look at that. It just it just cut it just comes right out of there. Just like the YouTube videos where nothing goes wrong. It's like I'm living a dream right now. What uh, maybe I spoke too soon. Clean. So I say this is uh this is definitely causing some issues. Look at that pinky finger. This thing is completely fried. And uh, I drilled out the bushing for a 716 bolt. Now I just gotta get the new one in there. I bet that'll actually fix death wobble. Shit. So like I implied earlier, I do have a video going into the 716 track bar bolt upgrade. And when I did this on my 01 Cherokee, I had to shove an Allen bit back here to get that nut to stay still while I tighten the bolt down. But on this truck, I can just fit a wrench on said bolt. So, like that bracket must have changed at some point. I'm not sure if that's a two-wheel drive beam axle thing or if it's a Renix thing. But that's nice. Jesus. Oh, I got everything all bolted in and honestly on this bolt I just cut off like half of the threads so you could get away with using a two and a half inch long 7 16th bolt um, back here yeah it works it works it's all torqued down to 74 foot pounds and then up here I actually got the cotter pin to line up with the castle nut like without even trying oh my gosh everything is just working now I'm afraid but let's go for a test drive with this brand new track bar in here That tightened up the front end like incredibly. It is, it is very responsive now. <laughs> There's no more popping, no more clicking. The steering is still loose, but you know that's just how the old Jeeps are. All right, here's our static numbers. These should both be zero, ideally. Okay, so we got 0.5 on the inboard, zero on the outboard though. So it's really not that far out of balance. I had to use sticky weights instead of the bang on weights because none of the ones we have here actually fit on this tiny little lip on here. But I got the static down to zero. 0.09 and 0.07 is well within spec. So hopefully that'll help. Something else I want to do as sort of a may as well thing is replace the existing electric fan with a 97 plus one because if you look at this fan, I mean, honestly, how much air could that thing really be pulling? <laughs> um, compared to this thing, it looks like a turbo jet engine fan. I'm going to cut off the connector on the new fan and splice on this connector to this fan. All right, so I got it all hack job together. Before I put it in, I'm going to test it. One thing you want to make sure you don't mix up is the polarity, so I just kept black with black. I'm pretty sure black is a universal ground wire in the Jeeps for all years. Pretty sure. I don't know. We'll find out. But uh, I want the fan to spin this way because that will suck air through the radiator instead of pushing it backwards. If you get the polarity mixed up, the fan will spin backwards. And I'm pretty sure this is the fan relay. The red wire with a white stripe. Probably gonna blow something up doing this. There it is. And it spins the right way. All right. So yeah, that is a fairly easy Renix upgrade. You put a 97 plus electric fan in a Renix just like this. Uh, these ones, the 10 blade ones, pull a lot more air than the old six blade ones. With smoke coming out of the valve cover, a lot of people would assume that means blow-by, but after that compression test showed me otherwise, there's no way it's blow-by. So I started checking the crankcase vent system for clogs 
And wouldn't you know it, yeah, this hose took this to work with me, and we sprayed 100 PSI of compressed air through it, and it was still plugged. 100 PSI of air could not unplug this. So we shoved a metal wire through the whole thing and broke out all sorts of, it was like rust. I don't, I don't know, it was this weird, like, dirt rust-ish material. I don't know where it came from. But this is no longer clogged, and I figured before I put that back on there, Take out this 916th fitting because that's pretty dirty as well. Went on a drive. Now that the engine's all warmed up, I wanted to see if there was any smoke coming out of here. And there's not. You can actually hear when I open this cap, you can hear vacuum. So that means the CCB system is actually working. That was a surprisingly easy fix for that. I'm not really sure if I ever mentioned it, but the passenger door does not open from the outside. It does open from the inside though, obviously, because I got it open. So the button had like fallen in the door, and so it wouldn't do anything. The lock still works though, I tested that. Still works from the inside and outside, and the inside door handle still works. So I took off the door panel, I started feeling around in here because, I mean, this is kind of the area we need to be working in. And the only way you can get to said area is by reaching up through this hole way down here. So, I couldn't really see what was going on. But I started moving stuff around and this started falling out of it. So, this part attaches to the back of the button. And the button goes through that hole and it pivots that bracket which moves this rod downwards, which opens the door. So, you can see the plastic that it screws into just broke right off, and so clearly that's not gonna, it's not gonna do door handle things. But the linkage did still work before I took it out. So, now I'm kinda trying to figure out how to get a door handle installed, because I mean, you get one access port right here. You, this nut back there. That's one. But then the other two are like back there. You can't get a... There's no way you can get a screwdriver in there. What the hell? So it needs a new outside door handle. Which I imagine is a pretty common junkyard thing. I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything to fix that. But it still opens from the inside, so... Alright, so I thought about it for a little bit, and I came up with another temporary weighted solution. You see, I got this piece of metal wire wrapped around the pivot point. Um, let me see if I can demonstrate this. So yes, when, when, that, when that does that, <laughs> it unlatches the door handle. So I got this piece of metal wire wrapped around a pivot point. And said piece of wire goes into this piece of wood when you pull on the piece of wood it does the same thing as if pressing in the button so let's see if this works let's go put that back up there so it don't get stuck in the door okay i didn't slam that all the way okay fully latched hell yeah dude what can i say i'm a professional Man, although this idea was actually pretty cool and I was fairly proud of myself, it's not going to work. <laughs> so, I closed the door and I locked it just because I wanted to make sure the lock worked. And that, that metal string got caught in the lock mechanism. And I just had a hell of a time getting that all back out of there. So, we're only going to have an inside door handle. No more fixes, wait a <laughs> In other news, got the rear view mirror mounted up. I used some of this Permatex rear view mirror adhesive stuff. Found it at Ace Hardware for like $3. That was pretty cool. It's nice to have this. And I'm on a little nighttime drive here for, for one reason in particular. Cam had one very specific request. So the dome lights in this thing don't work. They never do in Comanches. As they say, the damn things fail off of the showroom floor. But what this Comanche does have is footwell lights. And those do work. So I showed a picture of that to Cam, of them working, and he was like, yo, those need to be red. Imagine if the footwell lights were red. And I was like, that's a that's a pretty cool idea that you can do yourself. And he was like, no, 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 wait, you don't understand. 
they need to be red right now. And so he bought some red light bulbs and sent them to my house. <laughs> and oh my God, dude, this thing actually does look badass. Driving around with just the footwell lights on and them being red, it's a vibe. It's a vibe, as the cool kids would say. <laughs> oh, well, whoops, I'm in Georgia. Happens to the best of us. You might be thinking, Wayman, why the hell are you in Georgia when there are so many better, more productive things you could be doing? You see, I got a tip on a 1989 Jeep Comanche Pioneer with the 4-liter automatic and a Dana 35 in the rear end. And that's exactly the gearing and axle I need for my truck. So I'm going to head up to this junkyard that was like 5 hours away from me and go get it. Look. Guys. I'm in my paradise dreamland. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. I so wish I could just go to a junkyard whenever the hell. I'm like an hour inland from Savannah right now, and I gotta work tomorrow. I'm seeing some Cherokees. A lot of them are SEs, surprisingly. I found a Cherokee Limited, and man, here she is. I wonder how this thing ended up in a junkyard, man. Oh, look at the running boards. And the bed's already gone. Man, that went quick. Like, I jumped on this as soon as I saw it and the bed's already gone. And the rear bumper doesn't look too bad. It is a bit mangled up, but not too bad. Looks like it had a donut spare. Man, it's so weird to see one of these without a bed on it. Still got the drive shaft sitting there. And the sliding window. Oh my god, it's got the latch on it. Oh my god. Oh my god, look at that. Ah. Wow. Oh, that's a dash piece. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh my god. Oh, the headliners. Immaculate. Oh my god. I didn't even think about that. I should have grabbed the headliner. Immaculate, dude. This is like original headliner material. Look at that, man. Dang. Look at this. <laughs> Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? A Comanche slider window with the latch still intact. I can see why a lot of these don't have them. That, that feels very flimsy. You saw it here first, folks. That's incredible. Oh my gosh, look at this door panel. Dude, the door panel is... Oh my god, the window regulator is still working. Why is this thing in a junkyard? We're all that back up. Look at that. Look at that. There's not a, there's not a missing bit of it. And it's still got the mirror handle the jiggers. Oh, why is this thing here? Who did this? Oh, that's the radio. Might have to take that. There were no pictures under the hood online. What do we got in here? Still a mostly intact 4.0. That's... Like, seriously, this thing just got here, man. <gasps> oh my god, there's no way. There's no way. I don't even know how this thing goes on here. This is the cover. This is the cover for your relay box. Dude, these things are... This is like solid gold. wonder where the little clip things went. I don't even know how to get that on there. I've never, I've never, like, I've only seen these in pictures. Dude, I gotta take that. What is this? Is this cruise control? I don't know what this little box is. I'm not sure. Aftermarket cruise, maybe. There's still oil in it. 
How about you put some gas in this thing and fire right up? Uh, there's no fluid in the transmission, though. Dang, man. I want to know this thing's story. Okay, so I've very thoroughly picked through the thing. I did find a couple things. We got the original factory radio. I think uh, Kyle is going to want that for his XJ. And uh, the cover for your relays. And I also found this under the seat. This is the spare tire holder. And it still works. It was unwound all the way. And I wound it back up. I don't, I feel like it's missing a piece. I don't really know what they're supposed to look like because I've never seen one. I'm going to take those three things. And I'm also going to go and inquire about the doors because Cam's doors need a lot of attention. And aside from these ones being brown, they are specked out exactly the same. They got the, the pockets, the hockey stick, the crank windows, manual mirrors, manual locks. Except these ones are not rusty. Everything works. So I'm going to see how much they want for the doors and if they'll get them off today. I don't know. I'm trying not to get my hopes up too much. But this place is about to close, so I'm going to go be professional and not stay here after close. Big thanks to B&W Auto Parts of uh, Metter, Georgia. Oh my gosh, I got a I got a good haul of parts, man. Oh my gosh, look at this! I'm all excited, dude. Maybe it's a good thing there's no junkyards near me because that business would be making a thriving off of me alone. So this is a Dana 35 for my blue truck, and while I was there, I figured I'd get some other MJ specific parts while I still have Cam's truck. So I got the radio um, because Kyle actually requested it. Cam's truck already has an aftermarket radio in it, or at least the pieces of one. So I imagine the wiring's all been hacked up. I haven't really looked at it. But uh, Kyle does not have any radio, so he wants to put something in there so he doesn't just have a hole in his dash. And then I also got the steering column. And you might be like, Wayman, what the hell are you going to do with the steering column? Well, this steering column is a column shift steering column. Oh my god, yes, the MJs, and very, very rarely in the XJs, they had a column shift for the automatics. And so I also got the instrument cluster that has the little... Uh, pure NDL things in there. I don't know if it got the cable or not. The shift cable, I'm pretty sure they just cut that thing out of there. It's kind of unfortunate, but that's a problem we're gonna have to worry about later. What even got the keys in it? I didn't. Wait a minute. This is a Dodge keyless entry fob for a Comanche. I don't know what's up with that. But anyway, I had to stop for some celebratory Waffle House, so I'll report back when something actually happens. And for the final fix of the video, the relay cover. I know, it's not really a fix, and I know I should totally put it on my truck, but come on, man. This one is in way better shape. I think this one deserves the relay cover a lot more than mine, and I know uh, it doesn't do anything, and I know I don't have the little clips that are supposed to allegedly turn to remove i don't know i couldn't find them in the other truck at the junkyard so a zip tie is gonna have to do but uh does not go anywhere so here's the plan obviously this truck does still need a thing or two <laughs> a thing or two but it's time for this video to end and the next one to begin because in part four i'm gonna be delivering the truck to cam so, he's at Disney World as we speak, and the plan is for me to go get him. What I'm going to do is tell him that I'm going to have to come and show up in my white Jeep, because this one, a uh, little secret, is still unregistered as well. It's registered, I just, I, I still don't have license plates on it. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, but we don't talk about that. So I'm going to tell Cam I'm going to show up in my white Jeep because, you know, I don't want to drive an unregistered truck without license plates on it in Orlando. Uh, there's probably a lot of cops there who would probably not be very happy about that. But then I'm going to drive the red truck there anyway and totally surprise him, and I'm going to do the best I can to get that reaction on camera. So, with that said, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Really just out of sheer curiosity, I wanted to see something. So we're in park, reverse, neutral, drive. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it totally starts in drive. 
<laughs> it's a feature. <laughs>